Hello, this is Professor Kitch, and this is my third webcast on using the library at Cal Poly Pomona for research. This webcast will cover database searches and using document delivery. There are a number of organizations that catalog both journal papers and papers from conferences and put that information in databases which make it easy for you to search and find articles from a number of different locations and those are the databases we're going to be looking at today. There are a whole bunch of these databases and here are some of the ones that are most valuable for civil engineering. By far the best place to start is with Compendix slash Engineering Village and that's the one I'll be showing you today. That often is the only place you'll need to search for engineering articles. But there are other important ones too. The ASC library is a good place to search if you're looking for an ASC journal paper or an ASC conference paper but it only has papers from within ASCE. GeoRef is a good place to search if you're looking for uh, papers in geology or in engineering geology. A lot of those will be in Compendix, but if they're not, that's a good place to look. TRID is a good place to look for transportation-related articles. And if all else fails, you can start with Web of Science. Uh, Web of Science is a very broad database, so it'll have a lot of stuff in there that may not actually be of interest to engineers, but it's not a bad place to start. Okay, well, let's get started doing some database uh, researching. Uh, from the Cal Poly Pomona homepage, we'll go straight to the library page. And from the library page, we're going to scroll down here a little bit, down to this block that says Featured Links. And right under Featured Links, there's a link to Databases, and we'll click on that. And that will take us to this database page. And there's a whole bunch of different ways to get to the various databases that we have, and there are a lot in the library. But one of the simplest ways to do it for us is to come down here under the databases by subject and go to the civil engineering databases. So that's what we'll do next. And that will take us to this page, which has databases that our engineering librarian has identified as being good for civil engineering. And you'll see there's a bunch here over on the left of these ones that I've talked about already. And there's some other ones. So there's other ones you might look at here. But today we're going to be searching uh, Compendix's Engineering Village, and that's the place we're going to go next. So I'll click on that. And if you're signing in from off campus, you'll have to log in. If you're you're on campus you'll skip through the screen just log in with your regular Bronco password and Bronco name and that will take us to the quick search page for engineering village so that's where we're at right now and this is a really easy place to search this is probably the best place to start many times you won't have to use any pages other than this so today I'm interested in slope stability for unsaturated soils so I'm just going to type those three words, slope stability unsaturated, in the search field. And then on the right, there's different fields you can look at. And the ones I most commonly use are subject title abstract, if I'm just looking for keywords. Sometimes author, if you're looking for a specific author. Occasionally, if you know the title of a paper but didn't know the author, you could look under title. But for this search, I'm going to pick subject title abstract, because that's where the most of the keywords are. I'm going to click on search. So from that search, I found 593 hits on this search for slope stability unsaturated, which is quite a few. So I need to narrow that down some. And over on the left-hand side of the screen here, there's a bunch of different things I can use to narrow that down. I can narrow by author or where the author works. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to language and click on that to see what these languages are. And sure enough, there's quite a few papers in Chinese, which doesn't help me any at all. So I'm going to click on English and then scroll back to the top of the page and click on this limit to button. And that'll limit my search to only the articles that are written in English. So now I'm looking at just the English articles. And there's still 440 of them, which is quite a few. So I'm going to try and limit this again some more. And I'm going to scroll down again. And I'm going to check under this tab called classification code, because that has some special keywords in it. And I'm going to go click on this one that says precipitation, because I'm really interested in slope stability analyses that have to do with rainfall and changes in moisture content. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to limit my search to those articles that include that special keyword precipitation. So I've added that precipitation keyword, and that's got me down to 153 articles, which is pretty nice, but still pretty limited. So I'm going to add one more term uh, to this search, and I think I'm also going to try and limit it to articles that have infiltration in the title. So I'm going to type in infiltration in this add term box there, and I'm going to click on limit to there, and it's going to limit these one more time. So by adding the extra term infiltration, I'm now down to 103 articles, which is a pretty reasonable number to start with. And now on the screen I just see a, a short summary of each article here. It includes the title of the article and the author. 
and that's about it. But by reading the titles, I'm going to go through here and find articles that I think might be of interest to me. And I'm just going to read these articles. And this one has the rainfall induced. That sounds good. Here's another uh, rainfall infiltration one. I'm going to pick that one. I'm going to keep scrolling down and look at some more of these. Here's a seepage field study. That sounds in with rainfall in the title. And finally, I'm kind of interested in this reliability based one. So I'm going to pick that one. So I've picked four articles here that I may be interested, but I can't really tell too much about them just from the titles. So I'm going to go back to the top, and at the top of the page here, I'm going to click on this Selected Records. So this shows the four articles that I selected, but it doesn't show any more information than on the previous screen. But if I come up here and select Abstract there, instead of just showing me the titles and authors of each article, it'll also show me the entire abstracts for each of the articles. And now that I have the abstracts, I can read a little more about each of these papers. For instance, I read about this first one, and I realize uh, this is uh, an analysis of rock slopes, and I'm not really interested in rock slopes, so I'm going to remove that one from my list by clicking on Remove. So after removing that first article, I'll have these other three articles here that I'm interested in. And I've read through the abstracts, and there, and there are articles that I think I'd like to have. So I'm going to try and find each of these articles now. And at the bottom of each article, there's one or two buttons. Uh, this one has a button that says Find It and one that says Full Text. And when that Full Text button is there, that's a pretty good sign. So I'm going to click on that and hopefully I'll be able to get the, a uh, full text of this particular article. So I'll click on that button. And that will open up a new window. Let me enlarge that window. And it takes me to this place called scientific.net. And as I look down there, it surely it has the article listed here, uh, and it's got a price for it, and it's asking me to pay for this article. Well, what that means is this is a journal that the library doesn't happen to have a subscription to, so I could get it if I want to pay for it, but that's 28 bucks, and that's actually pretty cheap. Some of these things are 50 or $75 for an article, and that seems a little steep for me. So I'm not interested in that, so I'm going to close that window. But that doesn't mean I'm out of luck. I'm going to go back to the listing of that article, but instead of clicking on full text, I'm going to click the Find It button. And that's going to bring up a new page that has these two links on it. One says Check Holdings and Link Plus, and I know that's not going to work, but it also has this link, Request Document from Document Delivery, and that's the one I want to click on. I'm going to click on that. It'll automatically open up the Document Delivery page, and I can log in. You should have already set up your login account. And this is the best part of this, is that it goes to the article request page and it notices it's already filled in all of the areas for me so I don't have to do anything and I don't have to mistype anything or anything else but it's all filled in for me there I just read through it make sure it's fine I can add notes to it or other information if I think it'll help but when I'm done I'm just gonna click down here submit request and then I'm gonna have this request submitted here to document delivery and what's going to happen now is one of the librarians is going to pull this up later today or tomorrow and they're going to go out and find another library that has this article they're going to get it scanned for you and it'll get emailed through document delivery so this is a really great way to get articles for journals or conferences that are not in our particular library's database or we don't own copies of so that's the document delivery and you can manage all your document delivery items from this menu but I'm going to go back now to the original list of the three articles. And let's go down to the next one. Now this next one here doesn't say anything about having a full text available. But I'm going to go ahead and click on Find It here. And now on the Find It page, I'm going to see this link that says, hey, there may be a full text online version of this. So I'm going to click on that. And sure enough, that takes me out to the Electronic Journal of Geotechnical Engineering, which is where this article comes from. Now, this doesn't take me directly to the article like the, one of the previous ones did, but that's okay because I go back here and look at this article. I notice that it's from volume 19H, and the title is Reliability Analysis. So I'm just going to go back here. I'm going to go to volume 19, and this is Y, so I've got to get back to H. So I'm just going to keep clicking back here until I get to 19H. All right, here I am at uh, volume 19H. I'm going to scroll down, and sure enough, there's the article right there, Reliability Analysis and Sensitivity Analysis of Unsaturated Soil Slopes Under Rainfall Infiltration. And I click on that, and wow, here's the PDF of that article, and I can download that and save it to my thumb drive. All right, well, let's take a look at that last article that we thought we wanted. And I see that one here, uh, again, has a uh, full text link on it. I'm going to click on that. 
and again that's going to take me out to someplace else. On uh, this case it takes me directly to the journal Engineering Geology. Now that's a journal I didn't even know we had a subscription to but the library does and here again I've got access to either an HTML version online or I can click right here at the top and download a PDF of it. So that shows you how to use Engineering Village to search for and access uh, online articles. There are many many more things you can do with Engineering Village and there are a couple Engineering Village videos that are helpful for more detailed information and I'll put those on the website for you to look at too. But this should be enough to get you started using Engineering Village. So that concludes this video on library research and now it's time to get online and start searching.